Hello everyone. So today we are going to introduce the MongoDB charts. Uh, we already had tutorials that introduce MongoDB chart before, and today we want to introduce a new function that called a natural language query, which was uh, released in the summer of the 2024. So it has been like uh, six months. So six months before I tested, uh, it was not working very well, uh, to be honest. So now after six months, I think it's time to create this uh, tutorial that to introduce this function. So first, I want to introduce the data that we're going to use. So we're using the Twitter data. Uh, we collected about uh, 6,000 tweets uh, talking about elections. So today is November uh, 5th, 2024. So it's just exact the US uh, election day. So, so the data contains uh, 6,000 tweets talking about election before the election day, uh, where we have, like, say, the public metrics of each single tweet, like number of people, number of times those tweets being favorited, uh, replied, uh, fi uh, retweeted, etc. Or we can also find out the mentioned entities, for example, for example, and the mentioned users, the mentioned hashtags, and those annotations. So those are provided by uh, Twitter. Uh, we also have the tweet ID, so that's a unique ID of each single tweet. We can also say that when the tweet being sent out, so right now it is a string format, um, we can see the context of the tweet. And also, uh, if you check my uh, to, uh, previous uh, tutorials, you know that we also created vector database, so those are the embeddings of those tweets. Uh, we also use a large language model to identify like the sentiment of the tweets, uh, we translated tweets into different languages, such as Chinese. We also identified whether, tweet ex and whether the tweet expressed anger. And also, we also use a large language model to identify the mentioned people and also the mentioned organizations. Uh, we also have the user information, for example, the username, uh, the following accounts, uh, follower accounts, etc. So that's the data that we have. And now we just can switch to the MongoDB charts uh, when after you log into MongoDB website. So go to the charts. And then next, you are going to create a dashboard. So let's go ahead and create a dashboard. Uh, you can provide an optional, demo, uh, optional uh, description if you like. And then you can add individual charts. So uh, for each chart, you can only use the data that in the same project. So uh, in my project, I have one cluster. So that's a M0 uh, free tier cluster. And I'm using the demo database. And I'm using the Twitter data that for this uh, visualization. So here I'm using the tweet collection. Uh, so here uh, you can see this is the class sync uh, visualization. So, and this is where the, the new uh, natural language uh, function. So we'll come back here later. So let's first let's get familiar with the classical uh, visualization. So uh, you can choose the data source, and once the data is loaded, uh, you can drag different fields into the middle part, and you can choose different uh, data types. Uh, you can customize the visualizations, for example, the uh, diff the uh, you can drag different fields into X or Y axis, uh, define the filters, or customize your charts. Uh, you can also filter the data, so it can be either a document query or an aggregation pipeline. Uh, so let's do a very simple one. So let's say we are going to do a number number chart. So we find out the one that's called number. And it just requires a single field, so we're going to drag the ID into this aggregation. And we do a count. Uh, so this will tell you the number of the tweets it's because we are counting the number of the tweet IDs, which are unique. So you can give the name, for example, number of tweets. Uh, you can also give it a uh, different descriptions if you like. And they also have some suggested chart that you can use directly. Um, and then you can save this chart. OK, so that is our first chart. Uh, so let's go ahead and create someone that um, uh, to to show the results from our analysis. So for example, this time we're going to use a, a stacked area. So uh, we're going to use 
actually uh, discrete area. And here we want to show the number of the charts that collected at different time period. So we go to the tweet and we're going to show use this one, a created ad, and we know that it was in a string format. Uh, so we're going to convert that one into a date format. And then we bring that one into the category. And because it is in a date, and you can choose uh, the date interval, so we're going to choose the date of the month. And we want to see the number of the tweets. So we're here we drag uh, the count ID, a tweet ID, uh, to the aggregation pipeline one more time. And now we can see the number of the tweets that sent out on different days. Uh, we collect tweets on different days. So this uh, one day we collected some tweets. And this is a second day that we collected a few tweets. Uh, we can also drag anger to the series. So we gave it some different colors. Uh, because we asked OpenAI that if the tweet uh, express anger, uh, we'll see that true. If not, we'll see that false. Uh, if you cannot detect and you just give it unknown. And we can see that uh, the de detect results uh, have like a lowercase or uh, uppercase unknown, uh, etc. So let's, we can go to filters. Uh, so we can fill out some values that uh, that we are uh, interested. So for example, we just want to see the false, true, and also unknown. And we don't want to see the empty strings or null values. OK, uh, so here you can see that we have the, the green indicate false, and blue indicate true, and also the yellow indicate unknown. Uh, we can also customize the values. So for example, uh, let's say we're going to use by series. Uh, you can see that if there's no anger, we give it a green value. Well, let's give it blue value. Uh, if that's true, uh, we give it an orange value. And if that's unknown, uh, we give it a gray value. Or let's see, or white. Or probably not white. Uh, uh, a little bit gray. Okay. Uh, so that is. Uh, Tweets, okay, uh, on different days. Okay, so that's our uh, second chart. Uh, so this is also manually created. Uh, let's also see that those annotations. So what other uh, popular annotations? Again, we are going to use the same data set. And this time, we're going to use a word cloud to show the annotations. Uh, just keep in mind that what cloud actually is not uh, recommended uh, because it cannot accurately show uh, uh, the quantitative values. So it's more like a decoration purpose. So so we're going to find out entities and we're going to looking for the annotations. And here we're going to unwind those uh, annotations. So we're going to see the normalized text. We bring that one into a uh, uh, text, and we can unwind because that's a list. And then we bring ID again to the size so that uh, we can see that what are the most popular uh, annotated objects. So those can be person, can be um, organization, etc. So those are uh, annotated objects by Twitter, not by large language models. So we're going to show the annotated large language uh, result by large language models later. Uh, let's say we're going to look at the top 50. So because there are too many uh, entities. And here, let's also bring the sentiments to the color. So we can see that um, for different entities, what kind of color they have. And as always, so uh, when we are using large language models, so we may have like uh, like those, I'm sorry, you cannot identify the sentiment, etc. So I'm going to just, you know, uh, uncheck those uh, values. 
And again, uh, we are going to customize the color so to be consistent. A uh, negative, uh, we are going to use blue. A uh, neutral, we are going to use uh, grayish. And orange, we are show the positive. Okay. Uh, so now you can see those are the negative sentimentals, and those are the uh, those are the positive sentimentals. Sorry, orange indicate positive, and those are the negative sentimentals. And uh, we also have the uh, neutral sentimentals. Okay, uh, so this is our an annotation. So I give it a very simple uh, uh, title. Okay, uh, again, uh, word cloud is not the uh, recommended if you want to compare very accurate values. So if you want to compare the very accurate values, you should use bar chart. Okay, uh, they also have a map function. Uh, so let's see, we're going to see where the user are coming from. Uh, so we can choose the map. And for the users, so they provided their uh, location in their user profile. So just keep in mind that user can tap anything they like. Um, and also let's bring the Twitter ID to the aggregation. Okay, uh, so you can see that uh, they can only geocode uh, the tweets by uh, countries. And however, I just recently find that if we go to the uh, customize and general, so I'm, I'm not sure that when this becomes available, but now if you go to, the, you can you have the option there to change the shape scheme. So um, because our tweets are talking about elections, and those are most tweets are from United States. So I will choose the USA uh, states. Okay, and now you can see that uh, we can we are able to see more tweets that add to the. Uh, larger scale. So, for example, we see we have a lot of tweets from New York, um, uh, Illinois, etc. So, uh, so those are where the users are coming from. So, let's show this one as user locations. Okay, and I'm going to save this one. Um, so, I'm going to bring this one bigger. Uh, so, as I mentioned earlier, so we also used a large language model to identify the peoples and also organizations. So, so those are different from those identified persons in the annotation. So annotations are provided by Twitter, and we also use large language models to extract uh, persons and also organizations. So uh, we are going to see that which person are mentioned together with uh, which organization. Um, so probably I think we can use a heat map. So let's go ahead and use the heat map. And you can choose, do you want to put show organization, organization uh, on axis or do you want to put person on the axis? Uh, so let's put uh, organization first this time. So organization, again, we need to unwind because it's a list. And we put person on the y-axis, and it's also a list. Uh, for the intensities, we bring, again, Twitter ID. OK, so we can see we have very, very uh, messy uh, heat map. So almost you cannot see anything. That is because uh, we, ha we have too many uh, null values. Uh, so number one, let's limit the organizations. So let's say we just want to see the, the top 10 uh, organizations. So you can see here we have a lot of unknown values. And next, let's go to filter. So we're going to filter uh, field, the organization that has uh, empty strings, no values, all if they are not being detected. Okay, uh, so now we can see we have the, uh, the top 10 uh, organizations like IRS, GOP, FBI, uh, DOJ, um, OK, um, and let's also filter the persons. So let's add another filter. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to filter the missing values, empty strings, and also unknowns. OK, uh, 
you can also actually uh, change the, the label size. Okay, so make it bigger. Uh, so you can see that uh, those are the person that mentioned together with FBI, uh, IRS, DOJ. So that's the same person mentioned a lot. Um, this also is not the person that mentioned a lot with DOJ, uh, FBI, and IRS. Okay, so uh, so those are the mentioned extracted uh, persons and also organizations by using large language models. So person, words, organization, and those are extracted by large language models. All right. Okay. Uh, again, the annotations are extracted by by Twitter, so that's uh, provided in the in the data that when you download when you collect data from uh, using Twitter API. Okay, uh, so those are the um, basic charts. Uh, so you can see that actually um, uh, it still involves some uh, uh, like you need to understand different type of the charts, and also you also need to understand that how the data are organized, and then you can create uh, meaningful charts. Uh, so let's try some uh, natural language charts uh, this time. So we're going to add charts. Uh, we're going to use the same uh, collections, and we switch to the natural language. Uh, so basically, you can type uh, your questions, and they are going to uh, provide you with uh, uh, provide you the answers with, with charts. OK. so. Um, for example, let's see, um, show the top 10 popular Twitter user. Okay, so uh, if you watched my previous tutorials, you know that we can do that in, uh, in a natural language query that in here. So for example, here is this campus. Uh, if I say show me the top 10 popular users, and you can see that uh, it's very easy to find that one by using campers. So they converted this one into a natural language query. And, and now let's see uh, if they can create the charts uh, in the same way. So, so the difference will be that instead of showing the, the values, uh, they are going to show us uh, the charts. So it's not specific enough. Uh, let's try it one more time. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so you can see that this one is not working well, uh, like uh, natural language queries. So in natural language queries, uh, I sh I type the same prompt, and they can give me the exact right result. Uh, however, in the uh, natural language charts. Uh, uh, it's not that good. So uh, let's let's give it more uh, information. So the top ten tweets who have the highest followers. Okay. Uh, let's see if they are able to understand this uh, this prompt. OK, uh, so now you can see uh, it is generating. Uh, so they just generate a result. Um, let's see, create a bar chart and see if they are going to convert uh, this one to a bar chart. OK, here we go. Um, so you can see the top 10 Twitter influencers by follower or count. Uh, the title is really nice, and you can see uh, here those are top 10 users that have the highest number of the follower counts. Um, you also have the option to see the aggregation pipeline, so I think this is uh, very important. So if you want to verify that whether or not um, the results are accurate, so you need to check. You can check the aggregation pipeline, see how they make the uh, the queries. Um, Okay, uh, so if you like this chart, and you can just save the chart and also put that onto your dashboard. 
uh, like this. Okay, uh, let's try another one. So we're going to use the same um, uh, data source. Okay, um, let's try another one. So let's try the suggested prompt. So let's select this one and generate. Uh, because uh, in the summer, when I test, when I first uh, tested, uh, sometimes the suggested prompt even cannot work. All right, uh, so every follower count by user locations. Um, let's see, can you show this one on the map? Okay, so if they can show that on the map, that will be really cool. Uh, failed to generate, so retry it, okay. Uh, so I watched the, the documents, and the document said if they failed to generate, just retry it. So I go, I'll give it a last try. Okay, no. So they can only create uh, a bar chart uh, like this. Okay, uh, so let's try another question. So, um, for example, let's say that what is uh, are the average likes um, so average uh, like count uh, grouped by sentiment of the tweets okay so because each tweet has different sentiment and each tweet has different uh, like count, so I see that for different uh, sentiments, what are the average like count? So let's see whether or not they can understand uh, this prompt. Uh, it's updating, so it looks like the end stand. Okay, uh, let's see neutral. So the average, uh, the value is Oh, they are using the average of the public matrix light count. Negative uh, and also the positive. Okay, uh, so let's look at this uh, aggregation pipeline. Okay, uh, uh, to be honest, uh, <laughs> I think I, I cannot understand this uh, aggregation pipeline. Um, uh, so what I did was that I just copied this prompt in campus because I trust the natural language query uh, better than the natural language chart. Um, and I got this result. And so that for the positive tweets, the average number of likes is 0.2. Uh, for the neutral, it's 0. Uh, actually, it's 0 0.019. And for the a negative at point zero four. So I think this is probably the right uh, result. So I see. So that's using a group and also average. Uh, so uh, so I don't know why they get those like six thousand because you can you know that for for normal tweets, so the number of likes cannot be like six thousand. So I'm going to give it another try. Uh, and I see this time if they can give me the, the right result. Okay, so try it one more time. Uh, it's updating. Okay, uh, so this time uh, the number looks close to what I have here. Um, yes, uh, so if I look at this uh, aggregation pipeline, and uh, still super complicated, but uh, but at least the number looks fine to me. So um, so I will accept this result. So okay, so I'll give it a sum up. Okay, and I'm going to save and close. Okay, uh, so now we have uh, two more charts. So those are created by the uh, natural language charts, and you can see that uh, to be honest. So compared against when I tested in summer, uh, I didn't see 
much improvements of the natural language charts. However, the, the natural language query is, is super great. So it's far way better than three months ago when it was in the uh, preview. However, the natural language charts, I think, still need a lot of work to do. So um, fortunately uh, for those charts, uh, so we are able to uh, customize those charts manually. So for example, um, if I want to um, uh, filter data, so I can do that. Uh, so I don't want uh, those options. Uh, and also, um, I can also change colors, uh, etc. Uh, uh, and also the title. So so that even those are uh, the natural language charts created by AI, uh, we still have the option that to um, modify the charts. Okay, so those are the uh, dashboards. So we can see that uh, the natural language charts is a great function. However, it still require, I think, uh, some uh, improvements. So it's not that work that good as natural language query. OK, so one last thing that I didn't know in my previous tutorial is that uh, they have the field function where you can do interactive filters just like uh, Tableau or QuickSight. So for example, here, I open the filter. And then you can add filters. So for example, I can add uh, sentimental uh, as a filter. Uh, I can also add user location as a second filter. Okay. Um, and once you have that one as filters, so of course one thing you can do is that you can just like see, I just want to look at the positive uh, results. So if I apply the filters, uh, you can see that uh, all the results are updated. So um, I would have 300 tweets that are positive. That's not true. OK, uh, anyway. Um, so, so that you can filter the, the values based on, um, on this filter. Oh, another nice thing is that uh, you can filter based on, on the charts. So, so if you want to filter the, the values on the charts, make sure that uh, the variables that you are going to filter is in this uh, filter bar. So for example, uh, the sentimental is now part of the filter. So you can, if you click uh, positive, uh, you can see that uh, all the other charts are updated. Okay. Uh, if you click uh, negative, you can see that the negative is selected. Uh, and also all the other charts are, are updated. I have 2,000. 800 negative tweets, OK. Um, and also, uh, I also dragged uh, locations to the filters. So here, for example, uh, if I, there's no deselect. OK, I'm going to select all. Um, so because location is now also a part of the filter, so you can uh, either filter based on the locations, like here. All what you can do is that you can also filter by collecting the locations on the map. So for example, we have a lot of tweets in Texas. So I select Texas. And I want to see all the tweets that in Texas. Uh, I have 27 tweets that where user location is from Texas. And those are the most common annotations. And also those are top 10 tweet users. Uh, if I select everything, and now we show everything that uh, back to normal. All right. Uh, so finally, if you want to share these charts, you can just go ahead and share. And you can make it public. Uh, just pay attention that if you want to make your dashboard to be public, you have to make your Twitter, uh, the data to be public as well. So if you click Manage, uh, you check uh, public your data, like allow unauthenticated data access. You click Save. Um, and now this URL will be public. So I would recommend that you test this URL in the private mode. So for example, 
here. Uh, I'm testing this one in uh, Chrome, so in the private mode. Uh, so now you can see that uh, if we can see all the uh, visualizations, then uh, your chart is now uh, being public. Uh, so you can also test those filters. So as, for example, if I select uh, New York, Okay, and you can see that the, the filters also work. Uh, 